Hi, I'm Ryan and welcome back. Today we're going to be making some more progress in the Model House project. In the last episode, I made a bunch of miniature electrical outlets, and at the end of the episode, I installed them all throughout the house. I even wired them up and made little electrical circuits, I had little junction boxes, I went the full nine yards. At the very end, I was able to even apply power and have a little LED come on that I plugged into one of the outlets. So I know all the circuits work, and now I need to somehow connect them together. So now, in this episode, I'm going to combine all those into one big electrical system. I'm going to make a circuit breaker panel that goes into the basement, and I'm going to run all the wires from all the different circuits down to that circuit breaker panel. And hopefully by the end I'll be able to plug a pair of wires in and have my whole house energize. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. Let's get started. I'm going to begin by making some miniature circuit breakers. Now, I really want these things to be ultra-realistic, and in particular, there are two things I care about. First, I really need each breaker to have a small little switch in it that actually toggles electricity to a circuit in the model. And second, I need to have a little LED in each that will turn on when the breaker trips. Now, of course, there's, I'm going to be using just regular little two-position switches, so I don't really have a notion of tripping. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and on my breakers, when the breaker's off, it's going to be in a trip state. So I'm going to start off by making the housing for these breakers. I'm going to make them out of Delrin. It's easy to machine and has the right appearance. Oh, and I have a lot of it. Once I found an appropriate piece, I could begin to trim it down to the correct dimensions. Once two out of the three dimensions were correct, I cross-cut each stick in the little circuit breaker sized pieces on the table saw. I then loaded each circuit breaker blank into the mill and zeroed it out. Basically, I cranked the y-axis until the end mill hit the piece and bent slightly, and then backed it off a little bit. This is a pretty quick way to zero out a part if the operation doesn't require really tight tolerances. After getting the end mill in the right location, I could mill a pocket for the switch. On the other side, I milled a smaller opening so the switch could stick through the front face. Sweet, these are already looking pretty nice. My one small complaint is that they're a bit too shiny. Let's bring down that shine a little bit with some sandpaper. I'll also use this opportunity to bevel the edges. Much better. A while back, I got some really tiny drill bits at a local ham fest. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be for drilling holes in custom PCBs, but I'm going to use one for drilling a small hole in the front of my circuit breaker. This hole is where light from the LED will escape. Now, I can start to assemble the inner parts of the circuit breaker. I'll start with a switch. Then, I'll attach a resistor for the LED. And finally, the LED itself. Some super glue on the switch will hold it into the Delrin shell. The 
the very end, I added a wire to the center tap of the switch. I probably should have done this earlier. Oops. Here's the circuit breaker in its lit up state. Okay, I think the breaker's done. So the next step is I need to somehow make a, an electrical panel of some sort. And to me, the really most important thing about that electrical panel is I need to have a way that the breakers can come in and out through some sort of mechanical fit. If you ever have installed a breaker into a real electric, electrical panel, you know what I mean. There's a sort of like a popping action you do to put the breaker in, and it's really satisfying. And to me, that, that's part of how this model has to work. There needs to be a way you can pull the breaker out. It's just it's a requirement for me. So the way I'm going to do that, I think, is I'm going to make a little clip at the base of each breaker. And that clip is going to clip onto a, a center little metal piece. And if you look at a real breaker, you'll see this is similar sort of design, where there's a, it's like a little S-shaped snake that the breaker can clip onto. And I think I'm going to make my clip out of copper. It's going to be a little piece of copper wire, and that, that copper wire is going to have a bend in it that causes friction, and it's, it's going to clip onto that, uh, that piece of sheet metal. So I'm still figuring this out a little bit. I don't have all the details quite finalized. But I'm going to start out with one of these copper clips and see how it goes. I'll bend a short length of wire to make one of these clips. Once bent, I can trim it the length. And here's the result. Next, I'll drill and tap a hole in the side of each breaker for a bolt. This bolt will touch one of the contacts on the switch, and provide a place I can attach the hot wire of the electrical circuit this breaker controls. Then, I'll attach one of the copper clips to the breaker. To provide an entry point for current, I'll solder the middle tap of the switch to the copper. This took a while. I had to wait for the copper to heat up before the solder would adhere. And finally, I'll break out the ground wire. Typically, breakers don't need to be hooked into the neutral bar, as far as I know, but mine needs a ground reference so that the LED can illuminate. And that's the circuit breakers, complete. Now let's switch gears. Let's start working on the mounting structure for the breakers. This starts life as a piece of sheet metal. Now, I was going to try to shape this piece to make it match what the real one would look like. The whole S-shape thing and all that. But I ended up making the decision that doing this would make installing the breakers a lot harder. Oh well. At this point, I can install the breakers. And test to make sure the light still comes on when the breaker is off. The next task is to make the main breaker, which sits on top of the circuit panel. This requires a larger switch on the individual breakers. I think I have one around here somewhere. This one will work nicely. Once I acquainted myself a bit with this switch, I could pick a block of Delrin to shape into its housing. I went through roughly the same process with this piece as I did the individual breakers. Mm -hmm. 
Once the housing piece was complete, I could install the switch. I decided to bend the piece of sheet metal so that the main breaker would be on the same plane as the individual breakers. And then, I adjusted the plate so that it would accept the main breaker. I need a way that I can install the plate into the circuit box later on, so I'll drill some holes I can stick some bolts through. After adjusting the positions of a few breakers, things were looking good. Okay, I think I'm done with all the insides of the electrical box. And overall, I think it came out okay. Um, I like how all the switches actuate, I like that the breakers light up and all that. The one thing that I really think I could have improved on though is the whole copper clip breaker attachment mechanism. It works, I will give it that, but the tolerances matter a lot more on it than I thought going in. Um, it turns out that some of them ended up being really, really loose and some of them ended up being like really, really tight. So some of them just wouldn't even make contact with the metal and wouldn't really transfer current. So I ended up taking all of them and basically cranking them down like with pliers and making them really, really tight. And then the only way I can get them on and off is with pliers, like really uh, pushing and pulling. So I don't know. It's not really what I had hoped for, and I can't really pull them off by hand like I wanted. But I guess I'll, uh, it's a lesson I'll take for next time, I suppose. <laughs> um, so next up, I'm going to work on the box that all this stuff goes into. Um, it's the, the sort of like typical gray electrical box you see on the wall is what I'm going for. So there's going to be like a little door on the front and a front cover. Well, hopefully, I guess we'll see. But um, yeah, let me get out of this uncomfortable position and let's get started. <laughs> Making the metal box was pretty straightforward, and it was similar to the other metal boxes I made in the last episode. I transferred the bolt positions from the first sheet metal piece to the box. Afterwards, I verified that everything fit together. really starting to look like something. Next, I marked out all the places on the outside of the box that need holes. Some, like this one, are for the incoming wires from the meter, and others are where wires from each circuit will eventually come in. Then I could drill them all. Afterwards, I deburred them all with a handheld countersink. At this point, the electrical box was mechanically complete. All that was left was a coat of paint. I picked up the spray paint at my local home center. It's technically primer, but it has the right color for what I'm going for. Afterwards, I put a coat of clear gloss on top to try to give it more of a shine. While the paint was drying, I started wiring up the main breaker. On one contact, I soldered a wire and I attached the other end of that wire to the metal plate that connects to all the breakers. This wire will carry all the current for the whole house. On the center contact, I soldered one strand of some more of that dual conductor wire I used in the last episode. This is going to carry all the current into the house from the outside. Once the paint was dry on the electrical box, I could put it all together. I added some spacers to help keep the metal plate away from the back of the box. 
Fair warning, this is the point in the project where I really started to get excited. See what I mean? All the little details are beginning to add up into something that looks really cool. The last thing remaining on the inside of the electrical panel are the neutral bars. These act as a bank of screw terminals that provide a bunch of places to connect neutral wires returning from each circuit. Also, I'll connect all the neutral wires, or ground wires, coming from my breakers to these. The neutral bar started life as some scrap pieces of aluminum. I'll drill a series of holes equally spaced along the length of each bar. Turns out I had enough room for two rows, so I'll bisect each bar into two pieces. After some milling and tapping, I could assemble each neutral bar. I inserted all the bolts into each bar, one at a time. Here are both of them. I need to tie them together electrically, so I'll loosen the bottom bolt on each and add a jumper wire connecting them together. At this point, I can glue them into the electrical box. And now, it's time to wire up this thing. First, I'll connect the neutral wire coming in from outside to one neutral bar. Next, I'll wire up the first breaker. After verifying the breaker was off, I applied a test voltage and the light turned on. To make sure the breaker works, I turned it on and tested to make sure I received current with my multimeter. Yes, that looks about right. Okay, now that I've proven that things work, I can wire up the whole box. With the box wired, the only thing remaining is to attach some real circuits from the house to it and see what happens. And that's all I've got. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. I've had a few people suggest I start posting some behind the scenes pictures of the house on Instagram. So if you'd like to see what I'm up to before the video gets published, keep an eye out over there. A link should be on screen and will also be in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching. What do you think of my electrical panel? Let me know in the comments. See you next time.